Welcome to Electro Online. Here is the second part of that very interesting problem that we have from our viewer in Germany. Notice we already solved A and B in part one. We're now going to solve C, D, and E in part two. So for part C, and again, to quickly review what we're doing, we have a, a shaft over a well. We have a rope attached to uh, wound around the shaft. The rope comes down. There's a bucket with a mass of 5.2 kilograms. The shaft has a wheel attached to it, which allows you to work the shaft. The radius of the shaft is given 11 centimeters. The radius of the wheel is 35 centimeters. And the moment of inertia of the whole structure is 0.75 kilogram per, per uh, kilogram meter squared. And now I think, oh, and the bucket is allowed to go down 10 meters under the weight of the bucket. It comes down and the whole thing turns. And now we're supposed to find out the time that it takes to reach the bottom, the acceleration on the way down, and the impulse. Now for this particular one, I think using the graphical method to find the time to reach the bottom might be the best. Because we know that the velocity at the top was zero, and the velocity at the bottom, oh, we calculated that over here, but I forgot to write that down, so let me write that down. So the force, I believe, was equal to 60 newtons, and the velocity final was equal to 3.895 if I'm not mistaken, meters per second. Let me quickly check to see if I got, if I remember the right amount. 3.895 meters per second, that's right. So we calculated that in the previous video on part one. So let's go ahead and for part C, we draw a velocity versus time graph. So there's velocity versus time. And even though we're going down, it's negative velocities, we can just simply turn it around and make it positive velocities. So our graph will look something like this that and we reach a maximum velocity at this point so that would be equal to 3.895 meters so this would be in meters per second it takes t amount of time t is in seconds we don't know what that is equal to but we do know that the total distance traveled is equal to 10 meters so that means that the area is equal to 10 meters and now we can go ahead and say that the area of the triangle is equal to one half the base times the height so in this case we can say that the area is equal to 10 meters is equal to one half times the base which is the time that it takes which is the unknown that we're looking for times the height which is 3.895 meters per second all right that should allow us to find t because now we know that t is equal to 20 meters divided by 2 times 10 is 20 meters divided by 3.895 meters per second and with a calculator 20 divided by 3.895 equals 5.135 seconds 5.135 five seconds again I included a few extra non-significant figures just so that I don't have an error if I use that number for something later so this is part C can we now figure out part D and the answer is yes because we know that the slope of a velocity versus time graph is equal to the area so the slope is equal to the rise over the run which is equal to V final minus V initial over the time elapsed which is equal to the acceleration so easily out of that graph we can calculate the acceleration so for part d the acceleration is equal to v final minus v initial divided by the time that it took so in this case that would be 3.895 meters per second for the final velocity zero for the initial velocity and the time that we just got would be 5.135 uh, that would be seconds there we go and uh, that would be meters per second squared let's see here so take the inverse of that times 3.895 equals and we get 0 0.7586 0 0.7586 a equals 0 0.7586 meters per second squared so now we also have the acceleration. Finally, the impulse. 
And so that was kind of strange because I've never really worked on the impulse on something like this, but then what are the definitions of impulse? We have two definitions. Impulse is equal to the change in momentum, which is equal to the change in m times v. And since m doesn't change, we can say that this is equal to m times the change in velocity. And so what we could do is we could calculate the impulse on the bucket and then the impulse on the shaft separately. Let's try that. So here we could say that the impulse on the bucket is equal to the mass of the bucket which is equal to 5.2 kilograms times the change in velocity, which would be velocity final minus velocity initial. Now notice impulse is indeed a vector quantity. Direction does matter, if you want to think about it that way. So if you think about it, the negative direction is a negative impulse. And so we can say that IB is equal to 5.2 kilograms times the final velocity, which would be a minus 3.895 meters per second, minus zero for the initial, and so impulse is indeed going to be a negative quantity, so to speak, if you want to keep track of the negative sign. So, taking uh, 5.2 times 3.895 equals 20.25, that would be a negative 20.25, and that would be kilograms, meters per second. That's the impulse of the bucket. Now we need the impulse of the shaft, or the impulse on the shaft. So we can use the second definition. So continuing with E, I is equal to force times delta T. And we know how long it takes to reach the bottom. We figured that out right here, so we know the delta T. What is the force on the shaft? Now the force on the shaft is going to be the tension. But in this case, the bucket is moving, so the tension is not equal to the weight of the bucket. The tension is going to be equal to the weight of the bucket minus the mass times acceleration, since the acceleration is downward. So that's the tension, that's the force on the shaft. So what we can then do is that the impulse on the shaft is equal to the force, which is mg minus ma, multiply the times the delta t. So in other words, impulse is also defined as force times delta t. In this case, the force on the shaft is mg minus ma. All right, so let's go ahead and plug that in. So I on the shaft is equal to the mass times g minus a times delta t. And the force is in a negative direction, so we also get a negative impulse, if you want to think about that that way. Uh, so we have I uh, of the shaft is equal to 5.2 kilograms. I'm leaving the, the units off because I'm running out of space. G is a minus 9.8 minus a minus A, which is 0 0.7586. Whoa. And then I multiply that times delta T, which is times 5.135. So it's 5.2 times this, times this. All right. So we have a minus times a minus is plus. So we have 9.8, which is a minus. 9.8 um, minus the 0 0.7586. 0 0.7586 times 5.2 and times 5.135 equals. And so we have an additional impulse which is also going to be negative, I sub S, is going to be a negative 241.4 kilograms meters per second. And so there is the second part of the impulse, so the impulse on the bucket and the impulse on the shaft. That will be the total impulse for both of them together. Negative because motion is in negative direction, so we should have a negative impulse. But that's how you calculate the impulse on the bucket and the impulse on the shaft. It's an interesting problem, and there's how you do that. That's a lot of mechanics in that problem. Yep. We cover every topic. <laughs> and one problem, every topic. That's right. Okay, very good. I think that's a wrap for today. What do you think?